All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to destroy I can't afford it for good. One of the most annoying sales objections that you can get. It is one of the most frustrating, one of the most draining, one of the most exhausting sales objections when somebody says, oh, I, I love uh, what you got. I'd love to work with you, but I just can't afford it. I'm broke. So step number one is to get better at disqualifying. So I learned this a long time ago for some of my great mentors, and they said disqualification is what your marketing is designed to do. Your sales process is designed to qualify, but your marketing is designed to disqualify. So if you look at your content, your content should constantly be separating the qualified from the disqualified. And how do you do this? A great line is to regularly say, this is likely not for you. And the reason you say that is not because it's a, a tactic, it's true. What you're offering is likely not for them because it's gonna require massive action taking, commitment, discipline, perseverance, and a lot of people say they wanna change, but when it actually comes time to change, they won't put their money where their mouth is. In your captions, in your videos, you wanna regularly say that, hey, this is a serious program. This is likely not for you. Uh, you know, to be frank, this is very lonely. This is very hard. This is very scary. This is very risky. This is gonna require uh, a lot of overcoming obstacles. So you are literally disqualifying people that would be considered tire kickers, people that would be uh, not action takers and that are looking for shortcuts and not an ideal client. So disqualification copy will help you get better quality people on the phone who will be less likely to give you the financial objection. Step number two is to elevate your brand prestige. What this basically means is be the Rolls Royce of your space. Nobody goes into a Rolls Royce or a Bentley dealership and gets shocked at the ticket price. They're like, oh, wow, this is expensive. Oh, I can't afford this. They already know that it's gonna be expensive because those are the two best brands on the market. If you went into one of those dealerships, a Lamborghini or a Ferrari dealership, and they said, yeah, we've got a brand new Lamborghini on sale for $50,000, you wouldn't even believe them. They say, what's wrong with it? You would immediately become skeptical because the price is in an alignment with the prestige of the brand. So as you become more reputable, as your credibility goes up, as your social proof goes up, as you become in better shape, people won't expect what you offer to be cheap. So that's a great way to start getting less people to say that on the phone because they're already mentally prepared to pay top dollar. Step number three is pretty tactical. Uh, this is called create friction. So one thing that we do in the DMs and in our sales process before we bring people on the phone is we ask them, are you willing and able to invest at least four figures? We don't want to scare people on the phone who think that this is a hundred dollar investment, right? We want to disqualify people. So we create some friction there. We also ask them, hey, what are you prepared to invest if there's a good fit? Like we're not afraid to share our intent. We don't want to be sneaky and surprise them at the end of the call. Hey, there's something for sale. We want them to come on the phone already in the mindset that there's going to be an opportunity to invest. So we want to know, are you willing and able to invest at least four figures? Because if they're not, I don't want to waste their time. You don't want to waste anybody's time. We also challenge people when people fill out our application form. If they give us like one word answers, we'll come back and we'll say, hey, we're going to cancel this call unless you can make a good case for why we should jump on the phone with you and we say that because listen if your answer to what's your goal to make more money like well that's not that and who doesn't want to make more money you got to tell me why you need to sell me so we create friction intentionally and this again will get fewer people on the phone but you'll get better quality people we're looking for financially qualified people who are ready and committed to take action. That's what we're looking for. Readiness, commitment level, and financially qualified. All right, have you heard anything that's helpful so far? Let me know in the comments below. I know why you probably clicked on this video. You wanna get the lines. What do you say actually on the phone when they say, I can't afford it, or I'm broke, or I just don't have the funds right now, or things are tight? How do you handle that? Well, I'm gonna give you guys a framework when people listen to me sell on the phone, one of the things that people know is that you sell with certainty. I, your I said, what's my style? I asked one of my, uh, my mentors and he's heard me sell before and he said, you just install a massive amount of confidence into the prospect. I'm like, that's your technique. And the very first thing that I do when somebody shares, I can't afford it, is I seek agreement. 
I totally understand where you're coming from. Hey, that's why you're here, isn't it? Um, I'll say something to the effect of, it is expensive. You're exactly right. I seek agreement, I don't disagree. You're right, it's definitely not the most uh, affordable program on the market. You're right, it's not the cheapest program on the market. So I want to agree with them, all right? Because the truth is, is they're right. The next thing I like to do after seeking agreement is to position the problem as a positive, not a negative. This is a good thing that it's expensive. I would say something to the effect of, hey, listen, if this was super affordable, then we wouldn't be able to include what you actually need in order to be successful. What you need is a dedicated one-on-one coach. And you know, for us to provide that, that's not cheap. And it sounds like from what you've told me is that you've missed the accountability, the one-on-one -on -one attention from all these cheap programs that you've gone through in the past, I would say. So let me ask you a question. If you were to invest a significant amount of money outside your comfort zone today, would you take action? And they always say yes. So you can't afford for this program to be cheap. <laughs> and it's the truth. If it's another cheap program, it's just gonna sit on their desk without any consequence and not taking action. So I always reframe the problem that they see as a positive. Another tactic is to always have one-liners on hand that are inspirational in the moment to help someone muster up the courage to go for it and say, okay, heck, I'm in, I'm in. You don't have to say anything else, I'm in. Because that's what's happening right now. They're, they're just like on the fence, they're like, they're about to jump off and I'm just kind of firing different bullets until they finally say, okay, I, I'm in, I'm in. And I'll use little lines like, guess what? Fear is the path to freedom or Comfort is not from God. Comfort is from the devil. And you're about to just step outside your comfort zone. Isn't this what you've always wanted? And you give them an opportunity to own the moment. And I kind of just sit back and get out of the way and let them say, yes, let's do this. I'm in. The next part of the framework is called dilemma to solve. So I always like to just make a case for the pricing. I want them to understand while we just kind of did some emotional stuff. I want them to understand that, hey, listen, if we were to make this the most affordable program in the world, and we said that we could do what we say we can do, which is help you make it six or seven figures a year, would you even believe me if it was this cheap, right? You see what I'm saying? Like there's a disconnect. So what are you afraid of? You know, why are you surprised, right? And another thing I like to do, uh, say is like, hey, listen, we could strip away the help, the one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. We could take away the group coaching calls, the support, but guess what? Then all you'd be left with is a course. And guess what? You probably already have a lot of this information already on your computer. So I was put in a position to make sure this product, this program gets you results. And guess what? I'm not a product of courses. I always use my own story to sell. I'm personally, Vince Del Monte is not a product of courses. I don't have a lot of courses on my computer. I have a lot of coaching programs I've been a part of and a lot of masterminds I've been a part of. So I let people know that the reason that we charge this amount is because this is the price point where we see the greatest results, all right? People that pay, pay attention. If you wanna play, you gotta pay. Before decision time, I like to future pace and get them to see how this investment's actually gonna cost them nothing. It's ultimately free, right? When someone says, how much does it cost to work with you, Vince? It's free. Why? Because the investment pays for itself. That's a really powerful line. The investment pays for itself. Because if I can help you get one client a month, then you're break even. And our goal is not to help you get one client a month. And I say, hey, are you coming into the program just to get one client a month? And if that's the case, you don't need us. I'm not even sure why we're on the phone today. And they're like, yeah, that's right. I'm actually trying to grow. So you get them to be honest with themselves. Do you actually want to do this? I didn't come, I'm not joining this coaching program to break even. I'm joining this coaching program to build a six or seven figure business. And now they start to see what it's going to cause them and not cost them. You see the difference? And you can do this in fitness too. If you're a fitness or nutrition coach, you can start to help them see that the program doesn't cost you anything. In fact, our students on average, and you should figure out this number by the way, save three to $400 a month. Calculate how much money do you save people in fast food, in alcohol, in 
maybe gym memberships that they no longer need because they're training at home, or maybe they're working with a super expensive one-on-one -on -one personal trainer, and now they get your videos so they don't need that anymore, and now, heck, they might be saving $10,000 a year. And how much money are you gonna save them because they're not going to a therapist every two weeks or every month and spending a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand dollars a year? Your online coaching service is free. Finally, we wanna tell them, hey, listen, it's decision time. So the question is, is do you wanna keep going along with what you've been always doing and just keep taking the cheap route, stay on the cheap cycle, and not ever get the accountability or support that you've been missing so that you can hit your goals once and for all? Are you ready to problem solve this for good? That's the question. Are you ready to problem solve this for good? Are you ready to fix this permanently? I like to use those words, for good permanently, right? Because they and then let those words land, all right? Or are you gonna continue to try and save a couple bucks and just load your life up with tons of emotional trouble and wasted time that you can never get back? What's it gonna be? And I just, my style is not for everybody. I just wanna let you know, I do like just cutting to the chase and being a little more blunt. I will tone it down a bit, but I just found that like, this is a serious program and I wanna give them an opportunity to step up so that there's value even in how we're uh, communicating and that they actually get a chance once and for their life to just drop the excuses and make a decision that moves in a direction that they've never gone in before. So I, I wanna make it, uh, opportunistic for them to say, I said, heck yeah, I don't want to go in that direction anymore. I'm ready. And then I'll just ask him, fantastic. Do you want to do Visa or MasterCard? And then we get started. All right, what's the best address for you so that we can get you in the system and get you sent your welcome kit? And then I just transition into the rest of the call. And uh, that's pretty much some of the core stuff that I like to do and that I have to loop through if I'm getting the money objection. So. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. What was most helpful for you? Was there anything I missed? Was there anything that you uh, disagreed with? Is there anything you would do differently? I'd love to hear what you think below in the comments and please share this video with anybody who's struggling with this objection and I hope this video was super helpful for you helping more people with what you love to do. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.